okay so um, I think we already know what to do uh, at least uh, uh, our goal was to uh, make the edit button uh, working well and uh, uh, like we said uh, um, we are several places to uh, to, to modify, mm, trying to build on top of what we already have mm, as much as possible. So let's go to the code um, and see. Uh, first of all, we need to show the uh, the edit button when uh, when the user sorry, sorry show the form when the user clicks on the edit button. So right now we have a path here. Uh, in this part, we could, uh, uh, of course, render some exam form here. But first of all, we need to go to this path. So for going to this path, we need to uh, turn the edit button into a link so that this will link to this uh, uh, to this route, basically. So we go there where we are rendering the exam controls. Right now, we have the, uh, let's break it into lines so it's more readable. We have uh, uh, one cell that contains uh, just the edit icon and the delete icon with, with this action. Okay, so we need to modify. Right now, the edit icon is just uh, you know displayed without any any other um, action. We can wrap that into a link that goes to uh, to what to uh, update. Okay, so this transformed into a link. Yeah, there. Okay, so right now, uh, if we uh, we look at the application, the, the 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 orange button is working. Actually, it's going to update. The problem is that update is currently empty. Okay. But we can check that. So first of all, let's go. I have a mechanism for going to the to the code to the to the page. Then, if, since we are in the page, we should render something. So inside the route here, we add an exam form uh, that we may we may basically copy from from above. So we have the courses. Uh, we may have uh, remember that we have this filter operation only to show those courses that are not yet in the form. Uh, since we are updating the form, uh, it's not it's not good because we actually want to update one course that is already in the form. So let's start from scratch from the full list of courses, and then we have uh, uh, the, the exam form had the second property called add exam. Uh, this is probably not uh, not correct. So we, we don't want to add exam. Uh, maybe we want to update some exam. Mm. And we we will have to define this callback. So we want to call this component in two different ways. One is for adding. And so we have uh, an add exam uh, callback or for updating exam. So in that case, we will have uh, an update exam callback. Uh, the problem is that the component uh, probably doesn't like to have uh, two different uh, props uh, and check which one is which. Okay. Uh, we can just call the component, the property in one way. So, so for example, add or update exam and add or update exam so the property for the component will be the same and uh, uh, but uh, the the actual callback will, will be different so at the end of the submission of the form the component would just call add or update exam but uh, the actual uh, function that is called will be an add uh, function or an update function depending on uh, what kind of uh, form I had uh, implemented. Uh, so let's maybe create a stub for the update exam so that we, we don't have the syntax error. Const update exam. Uh, 
new exam. And for the moment, let's do let's don't do anything. Okay. To do. Uh, okay. So and uh, of course we need if we change this property we also need to change the callback that is called inside the exam form component. So exam form here we are we were calling a props dot add exam and they modify that with props dot add or update exam. We so. Uh, this is just an aesthetic change. Okay, uh, the the form when it's validated, when it's saved, will call a function that will do something with this new exam. So you can add it, you can modify it, you can throw it away, whatever. The fo the form doesn't know. The form only knows that when the data is valid, it should call this callback, add or update exam or handle callback or whatever. Um, because the actions that the form does are basically the same. Uh, and uh, also it will close after updating. So the behavior of the form is practically the same. Okay, so let's check what we are doing here. Let's go back to the application. We I go to edit. Right now I'm going to update to the update URL. The update will show the form. We still have to initialize the form with the correct exam. Still has to be done, but they can go back. They can edit another one. And uh, that was web applications. Uh, I want to have uh, maybe 19 uh, on a different date, the 1st of April, because it's a joke. And OK, in this case, and when they save, of course, they didn't change because we still haven't uh, implemented the update method yet. OK. But what we are doing is we are passing an object of type exam uh, with after the, the the request for updating it. So we have still two steps to go. One is to pre-initialize the form, and the second is to actually update the data in the in the in the in the list of uh, of the state of the component state. So first of all, initializing the form, it means that this uh, component, exam form, should receive some information about uh, the actual content of the row that is trying to edit. Uh, how can we do that? We can use the location state that, we, that the router provides us because we are navigating to the exam form Let's go back to where we are navigating. So it's in the in the um, exam controls component here, where we are linking to update. Uh, we could link to an object that will contain some information about the current uh, exam. So instead of uh, uh, having a link to string. We could use the we could use the, the, the alternative of uh, having specifying an object. This object contains a property path name, which is actually update. So right now, I just wrote the same thing with a different syntax. Instead of uh, specifying a string as a to destination, I'm specifying an object with a property path name. Okay. So for the moment, I didn't change anything. It's totally equivalent, but now we may add a state property, a second state property in this object and that may contain whatever we want. May contain, may be an exam property. So state is a new object. In this object, I can put the information that I want my destination to know. And my destination would be the update route. Uh, the exam would be props.exam. Okay. So what we are doing is we are linking to update, but in this link operation, we are also providing a state object. This state will be 
recovered from the location attribute. Okay, um, so it will be inside location dot state dot exam. I will have a copy of the exam that represents the current row, and I can use that for populating the form at the beginning. So in this means that in the form, we should first of all access the location with the use location hook, for example, which I think is the easiest uh, way, and then check whether location state uh, is defined or not. If location state is defined, is defined means uh, that uh, we are in a date mode and uh, location dot state dot exam is the starting values has the starting values if location state is undefined undefined we are in add mode okay so by the presence or not of this property we can customize the behavior of the component and basically what we need to do is uh, to change uh, the default value so the default value for a course is empty in add mode, but should be the current exam in exam mode. It's sorry, in update mode. So we could uh, use a ternary here saying, okay, uh, location to state is defined. If yes, then the default value of course would be the location dot state dot exam dot course code otherwise let it be empty and the same for the score if uh, location dot state is defined then use the current store score for initializing the form location dot state dot exam dot score otherwise start empty And uh, the same for uh, the date, location.state is defined, then use location.state.exam.data. Just remember that data is a DJS object in our code, so we must provide a string for the form to work. And so we'll be, and we need to format the string with the ISO format. Otherwise, we start empty, or we may start with today's date, for example, date yes, today dot format again in the ISO format. Okay, so basically, what we are doing is uh, uh, initializing the, in the the state from which the form is controlled remember we are in a controlled form environment so the form is controlled because this the value of the different form components comes from a state variable we we may set the beginning value of the state variable the default value of the state variable by using the location of the state when the component is first constructed remember what we said about, uh, before the break about destroying and rebuilding the components so it's very important that this will only this code will only be executed when we are rebuilding the component, okay? Not when we are just updating some props. So let's see if I made some mistakes or not. Uh, software engineering 27, 24 of May. I click on update, and my form is pre-filled with software engineering 25, 27, 24 of May. If I click on add, of course, the, core, the form will start empty with today's date. 
if I check cloud computing, I click on edit on the update button here, 23, 9 of April, 23, 9 of April, cloud computing. Okay, so we are teleporting the, the, the value of the component in the current row to the other component through the router that we store it into location.state and, uh, um, and it will be used as the initial value of the form. Then we can normally work with the form, modify it, and when we submit, we are calling this add or update exam that we still have to implement. Remember, it's not implemented yet, so right now it won't do anything. But we can implement it easily. Uh, so let's check also, yes, with add, uh, it's still working. Yes, it's still working. Because we, we since we modify the component, <laughs> I need to check if I didn't break the other behavior. Um, so let's go and implement the update exam function. Well, in this case, updating the exam gives me the information about a new exam, with, but it should be one of the exams already present in the exam state. So I should update the state, set state, set exam, sorry. And uh, again, we are updating uh, an existing state, so we need to, to, to set it as a callback. So the old state. will be replaced by a modified version of the old state. And uh, we can use a map uh, operation for modifying the array, for creating a new modified array, where all the elements will be equal except one. So I will be, the new component uh, will depend whether the Okay, map requires a, a callback with the, a single exam. And uh, let me maybe write it in a different line so that it's hopefully a bit clearer. So I'm mapping, I create a new array where the, every old exam will be replaced either with uh, um, a copy of itself because I, didn't, I don't need to change it or with uh, uh, the new exam that contains uh, uh, that was where we were, what we were basically um, what the user had just modified. So for each exam, I need to check whether exam dot course code is equal to the new exam dot course code. Okay, this means that. This is the exam that the user wanted to modify. And so in the new object, we must use the new exam. Sorry, question mark. Otherwise, we just, uh, have, we just put a copy of the old exam. Hmm? So we are using a method for creating an identical array, a copy, with a new array with an, a cop, an identical copy of the contents for all the elements except one, the one whose course code is uh, matching. So this new exam comes from the form, and this exam is just a parameter of the map that will um, iterate through all the elements. So let's see if this is working. Let me save it, go back to the browser. So 23 in cloud computing is too low. Let's increase it. So let's go here. 23 becomes uh, 29 and save. And now we have cloud computing with 29. So we actually uh, were able to modify one property of, uh, of a table. Hmm? Uh, so this is nothing new. Uh, the just the update and add are just a normal operation for updating the state at the high level. So nothing to, uh, has nothing to do with the with the router. Okay. The only difference is that this method has been called from a component that was instantiated in different ways according to the route. I think there's still one detail that we should fix. For example. Uh, 
I should not be able to change this in edit mode. So if I go to edit mode here, software engineering, uh, I should not be able to change the course and keep the same score and so on. So I think that uh, this score should be blocked, fixed in edit mode to the value that uh, originally had. Because otherwise, I, I, I'm doing some with the kind of update. I'm updating the course uh, score or a different of um, of an exam that is different from the exam that I clicked on. So by clicking on update software engineering, I would be able to update the 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 score of cloud computing, which is okay wrong. Uh, and the, it is quite easy because we just have in the form since we know that look location.state will tell us whether we are in um, edit mode or in add-in mode, we can use this location.state for preventing the, here, the select from, from working. So we can maybe uh, uh, disable, we may disable the select, so it will be shown, but it cannot be clicked, basically, uh, if we are in uh, um, in edit mode. In other mode, it should work. In edit mode, it shouldn't work. So we can have location.state that is interpreted as true false. If it's, um, if it's missing, if it's undefined, it's a false. So it's not the location.state not defined means this property is undefined, meaning the select is not disabled, so it's enabled. If location to the state is defined, that this, this, uh, this attribute will be true, so will be present, and so we are uh, disabling the, the select. Uh, let's try it. If I click on add, this is working normally because we are not in update mode. If we click on edit, you see that it's grayed out and they cannot modify it and it's still fixed to the one that I selected. So data science, click here, software engineering is frozen at the component, that at the type of exam. So I can only modify the score and the date of the exam and not the name. If I want to modify the name, of course, I need to go and select a different name. And I think that's all. So I think uh, these are all the functionalities that we are needing at the moment here. Uh, adding, uh, editing, deleting, that can be, you, can, you, you imagine that they can be reused uh, in, uh, in many other contexts, uh, the same logic, the same reasoning, the same you know, uh, design of the routes uh, are uh, more or less uh, uh, always the same in this kind of uh, interaction. Okay, the only feature we didn't use here in this exercise was the uh, parametric routes. Okay, uh, so having some par uh, parameter values in the route that can be used uh, as a match uh, parameter ID, in this case was needed. Uh, we will use it more when we have also a, a server from which we give a component, uh, uh, an ID of an element, uh, and that component itself will fetch it from the server. But right now we have everything at hand, so it's easier to to pass the object, in this case the exam, instead of uh, uh, passing the ID. So um, what I'm saying is that we could also have designed this in a different way. So instead of going to where is that the exam controls, instead of going to update and giving a state value we could have probably linked to something like update uh, slash uh, 0, 01 uh, fx1 ov or whatever okay so in this case um, we can lead to some, this kind of uh, url that contains the id of the course or contains some information and we could recover this information with the uh, route 
where we have a parameter like course code. So with a column syntax, we are saying, okay, this part of the path is a parameter and let's store it into this variable so that we can extract it later. So this is another way of passing information from a route to another, of embedding that in the path when linking and extracting the property from the path when uh, parsing the route. It's good, it's, it's easy if we only have one string, one parameter. In, the, in our case, we have an object, which is a complex, a complex object with different attributes. So it's easier to send it as the location state than the URL uh, address. But uh, it's, a, it's an alternative that we, you can, you, we may consider in other cases, okay? Okay, so let's restore the previous version so that we don't make any mistake. Okay, any questions? Okay, so if there are no questions, let me commit this latest version with the implementation of the other functions. And, uh, okay, and so next Monday in the lab, uh, you will be, uh, we will suggest you to restructure, to implement uh, the, the various functionality of the application by using these routes that, uh, as you see, if you think if you think them well, they will actually um, simplify a lot of your, your work because uh, uh, you are separating the different uh, parts of the application. You don't need to do everything. And some part of the state, which is the switching logic, uh, is already handled by the router with all the added benefits of the URLs or the navigation and so on. So it will actually be a step for simplifying the application and making it also easy to add new things to the application itself. Okay. Um, so we may close this topic, unless there are last minute questions, and we may spend the last half an hour or so in uh, the presenting something about uh, JavaScript uh, classes and modules, where um, we there's something that we skipped at the beginning when describing the JavaScript language because it was not was it really needed at the moment. Uh, but of course, it's part of the language and it's also important uh, to understand. We also used it. We'll, we are going to use classes uh, um, in the in the back end uh, for our convenience. And uh, of course, we are already using modules, so maybe it's better to to, uh, to explain a bit better what, what they are. OK, so right now, this is a moment where we are sort of uh, uh, closing the front end part. Uh, preparing to move to the back-end part and then finally the last step will be joining the front-end with the back-end. Uh, so we are uh, giving this uh, extra information here. Uh, first of all, uh, we need to co go back and think about uh, the uh, the nature of the JavaScript language. Okay, uh, The first lecture I, I said that JavaScript was an object-oriented language but not a class-oriented language because the main feature were objects that could be created and used uh, without classes. You don't need a class to create an object. Okay, This is something that we said a month ago. And how is how this is working? So how can an object uh, exist independently, but at the same time uh, can inherit some property from a class when we are using the classes? Uh, there is a very complex mechanism. Uh, I just want to mention it in, a, in two or three slides. Uh, um, to understand the difference between other between JavaScript and other object-oriented languages, okay, uh, we will see in a moment the class syntax. But classes are just a different way of writing functions, okay. So let's not don't have too many expectations. It's just syntactic syntactic sugar 
some different syntax for doing what we already know how to do with basic, with functions and objects, which are the real nature. Um, the, the important part is that uh, every object in JavaScript, uh, all objects, also the primitive ones, everything, has a special property, which is called a prototype. Uh, which is called uh, with this strange name with uh, with square brackets and uh, an object prototype is a property that points to another object so we have an object here okay with something inside and it has a prototype uh, property that points to another object And this other object also has a prototype property that points to another object and so on. So every object as a chain is changed, chained to other objects by means of this uh, uh, prototype uh, property. Okay? There are methods for reading and, uh, and writing and modifying this uh, prototype property for every object. Usually we don't use those. These are internal um, say structures that are used for for reflector or for reflection programming, so for understanding the nature of objects. And um, the second object is a sort of, is called the prototype of the first one. And there is only one uh, object in the language that doesn't have any prototype, which is a object. So the object called object. Sorry, but it's called like this. Which is the top-level object that doesn't have a, doesn't have a prototype. It, it's the only thing in JavaScript that has a null prototype. So basically, this chain starts from your objects and goes up until you hit the object pro, um, element that doesn't have any anything as a prototype. Also, functions, also classes, uh, they all they are all type of objects objects in JavaScript, and so they also have a prototype attribute. So what is happening is that if you have a constructor function, for example, the type of objects that you are constructing remember the function that constructed them through the prototype uh, attribute. Uh, for adding confusion to confusion, in JavaScript there is a different attribute which is called the prototype, which is not a square bracket prototype. These are different. In some cases, they are pointing to the same object. In some cases, they are pointing to different objects. And uh, so the dot prototype is used when you use a constructor function uh, or a class, which is the same thing with a different syntax. And it's, uh, it's a more high level stuff than the low level prototype property. So just to give you a, a flash of what is happening, and then uh, we'll try to understand how it's useful for us. Um, let's assume we have some code like here. Uh, we are, uh, for example, creating an object uh, D of type date. Okay, so a very simple statement. D is an object of type date. So the object D is here, and you see that uh, um, the prototype of this object is pointing to some uh, prototype object for date. Uh, date is a function, and the function has points to some uh, prototype object. This prototype object, in turn, points to object. So this means that D is an object uh, derived from date, and date is derived from object. And object, uh, of course, it doesn't is not derived from anything, and it goes to null. When we create uh, an object uh, directly in the code, like here, without constructing it with a function, uh, this R, R is that is only as the the object prototype, okay, directly points to object. It's, it doesn't have a, a special type, let's say, okay, uh, it's not constructed by any other function. And so it, uh, it, it just, it's a, just a normal object. If we are defining a constructor function, remember a function that, will const that should be called with a new keyword, and so inside of this we can set some properties, then in this case uh, it is similar to the date object, 
p our p here this person p is a prototype as a prototype of type person so we can say that the type of this object is the type created by person person that prototype is the prototype for person the function so person is a function how can i know that this person is a function because each prototype is function so it's a bit complex is the internal representation of objects if the way in which i remember that p was created by a function called person and so it creates objects that share something in common here and uh, this person is by itself a function and the function is an object and so on but uh, uh, there's nothing this part here function object and all these prototypes here are predefined by the system so we don't we don't uh, we don't need to see them our objects are here r and d and p and the function person that we defined and all these prototype objects are, are automatically created and automatically linked. Okay. This is the mechanism by which uh, we may, uh, let's say, inherit properties from object to object. So you see, there are no classes here. In Java, you would have an object that remembers the class creation. We have a dot class attribute into objects. Here, we don't have class attributes. We only have prototypes that link uh, to an, uh, another object that was used in the creation of ours. Um, so actually, it's not uh, uh, in, in Java, for example, we have inheritance from class to class. A class inherits from another class that can be inherited from another class that may inherit from the top level class. Okay, And then every of these classes can create objects but objects don't inherit from themselves okay an object belongs to a class and this class may inherit from another class in javascript we don't have this structure we have objects that may inherit or at least uh, we don't use the word the type uh, yeah, the word inherit we use the, they are prototype linked to other objects so this is something that in java you don't have you don't have an object that may inherit from another object no, an object is of a type of a class, and that class may inherit something from other classes. So inheritance is a, is a relationship between among classes. In uh, JavaScript, inheritance or prototype linking is a property between objects. Okay, classes are optional hmm, in this in this concept. So uh, object is the sort of a top level object from which everything every other object will inherit. So every property we have on object like to string, for example, uh, is a property that is, a, that is automatically available to every other object through this uh, prototype linking mechanism. Uh, for example, the prototype for object defines a lot of properties and methods that are available to all other JavaScript objects. So when, since we are able to use to string everywhere, it's because the object prototype is an object that contains the toString method and value of and so on. So the whatever is defined at the level of object in practice of the uh, yes, this object prototype class object, it's an object. This object prototype by itself is an object okay, that may have some properties. So this object will have some the property called, for example, toString here which is a function that uh, does something and uh, uh, then be, maybe of course redefined at the lower levels and so on so this is why uh, uh, an, um, an object may access methods or properties from higher level objects and in our person here we can imagine that we, we may add some methods to person.prototype and these methods, we may add them, just write in person.prototype dot method name equal to, and then this method will be accessible to all the objects created by this constructor function. Okay, so 
uh, for making some properties uh, inheritable basically or accessible by lower level objects we don't need to store them into the function or into the objects we need to store them into the prototype of the function that is creating the objects um, okay and how can we access these prop properties that okay inherited or linked the properties uh, well the prototype chain is automatically navigated by javascript every time i'm checking for a property okay if i'm writing uh, something like p dot a with a where a is a property javascript first checks whether the object p contains a property called a if it finds it it will use it otherwise it will follow the prototype chain and go to the next uh, prototype object and check whether there we have a property called a which is defined if so it will be used if not it will go to the next uh, prototype link and so on until it finds a property called a or null null because we already reached the top level object at this point uh, the property is undefined if i find null so i can find this property up in the prototype chain or I can decide it's undefined because it, it was no, nowhere to be found in the, in the chain itself. This is a, a, a happens every time I'm reading a property. Okay, uh, I navigate the chain for getting the value, or I find an, uh, or it will be undefined. When I write in property, this doesn't happen. This doesn't happen because it just creation is uh, it's, it, it just creates a new property on the current object. So uh, if I'm doing some x equal p dot a, I'm reading a property, and so the prototype chain is navigated. If I'm writing something like p dot a equal to three, then the property a may already belong to this object, and so is updated. Or if if it didn't belong to this object, it will be created and assigned the value 3 and this means that the, on the next uh, instructions now this object p will have this property and so the next uh, code will not see anymore a, a, a property called a in the in the upper prototypes okay so when i'm reading i follow the search chain when i'm writing i'm creating new properties every time and so i sort of hiding possible other properties with the same name <coughs> from other objects so this is the, the basic mechanism by which we are sort of inheriting uh, properties in a read-only way i would say because when i try to modify them i'm already making a, a different copy uh, i'm making a copy before and without checking if there is another name okay so if there is already an upper name and i and write it locally the upper name is hidden, is shadowed without any warning. Hmm? Uh, okay, so if you are into the comparison between languages here, we try to, to pull up a table of comparison between class-based languages like the Java or prototype-based language like JavaScript. But I don't want to. Uh, I only want you to appreciate that the mechanism is different. Uh, of course, we are. If, if we were to work or create libraries that go deep inside javascript of course we need to understand much better this prototype mechanism but uh, um, for the moment uh, um, so, okay we, we we may stop here let's say at, at this level of um, um, of um, of detail but uh, the knowledge of the prototype will help us may help us in defining object properties from constructor functions so we may now understand uh, the syntax that we wrote uh, when at the beginning of the course we are creating some person with some attributes uh, with our with our constructor functions and we use the syntax this dot play or this dot where for setting new attributes of type value string or of type function okay methods and this syntax is practically uh, can also be substituted by search, uh, setting a property 
on the prototype of the function. So person is still a function. It contains a prototype attribute. And we can add a property to the prototype object. What is the difference? The difference is if this, this is the new object. So every time we create a new object, we create a property on that new object with the value that we want. So that, that property is replicated locally on each and every object that has been created. If we are setting the property on the function prototype, the property is defined only once, and all the objects will be able to access that property in read-only mode, thanks to the navigation of this prototype chain. The difference is that also, since this attribute is defined at the function level, it doesn't have access to the local variables of the object or, or the function itself. So it's sort, sort of like you know, a static method or a static property defined at the class level or you are defined at the, at the function level cannot use uh, this. You cannot use the value of the local object, but it may use uh, maybe general purpose methods. Um, can I use this unless, of course, this method is called, remember the, all the details about this, is called with an object as the first element. So basically, there are two different syntaxes. So if you want to create objects that share a set of properties, the bottom line is that you can add these properties in the constructor functions by putting them into each and every object, or you can add them separately to the prototype uh, and so they will be automatically found by the object when you are trying to use them. Um, the, here there are some details about uh, which is faster, but I think the difference is so, so narrow, so small that uh, we don't need to care about uh, uh, performance here. Okay. Building on the mechanism of, uh, of prototypes, uh, uh, JavaScript also has uh, classes. Hmm? Uh, we delayed this concept for a long time, but classes basically are functions with a different syntax. Uh, from uh, ES6, uh, from uh, X66, uh, uh, we have this new keyword class uh, that is able to create classes which are a special type, special way of defining functions. So basically classes were introduced because people were used to write classes and they were not at, uh, you know, uh, not familiar with uh, creating functions that create objects. And so it was added as a new syntax, basically. Um, and uh, as with function, we have two different syntax forms. One is an expression and the other is a declaration. So remember, your function could be written with function name or with function e um, or name equal function as an expression, and the same goes here. Um, sorry, let me answer the, the question of Lorenzo, who's asking, uh, when we're writing, define a function for the prototype, we access the first prototype in the chain. Uh, no, person, we are, this is the prototype of the function, of this function. Okay, this is a constructor function. And this function has, a, has its own prototype object. We may we are adding a new property show edge to this prototype that is linked to the function. We are not navigating everything. The, this person dot prototype is the object associated with the function. We are not navigating. Okay, this is the difference between prototype. Is not the square prototype square. We would link to the your two object basically but is the prototype object associated with the function okay so it's confusing i know they are using the word prototype for at least three different concepts in javascript but not my fault again okay uh, about the syntax of classes uh, so we can define the class with a classical declaration class name of the classes and the method called constructor okay so the constructor function is a method which is, which is defined inside the class which is, and is called constructor. So you don't, in, like in Java, you call the constructor with the same name of the class. Here we, you, we must call it constructor, okay? 
um, and you can and you see you you recognize what you are doing here is the same that you would be doing in a constructor function that we did at the beginning of the course it will be like function rectangle this dot height this dot white is the same hmm? but we are putting that inside the constructor so that we have space here for adding extra uh, methods uh, to the class itself hmm? or we may use a class expression that just creates a class like from here to here and returns an, a class object that we, we can store into for example a, a variable or whatever so we are not creating a rectangle object here but we are storing uh, the reference to a class into a rectangle and then we can create new objects with a new rectangle uh, by using this if if we think that, the, that that classes are functions everything is easy because it's what we're already doing with functions we create a function and we store a reference to a function into a variable the same with classes okay um, and we can also omit the name of the class here if we want just to create a, a very quick and dirty class and just remember the reference for that okay so it's a separate syntax and uh, of course in the body of the class uh, we have uh, we may have one method called constructor if we want the method constructor knows about the class the super class so if a class is a uh, inherited extends another class is the keyword super points to the to the to the mother class to the upper class and so we may call the supper.constructor if you want um, and inside classes we may have uh, uh, both uh, prototype methods that apply at the class level or start, uh, but may access the objects because they are the prototypes are linked to the objects or static methods that are not linked to any, to any object. So the prototype methods, which are the normal methods, are normal methods that can be defined inside the class. There's nothing new. They're just we are defining function inside the scope of a class declaration. You see, there is no function keyword here. There is no arrow, uh, arrow, fat arrow symbol here. So we are just, it's like defining a function, but be without the function keyword. If you do that inside a class, this uh, function will automatically become a property of every object created by that class. They are called prototype methods because they are stored into the prototype of the, of the class, of the function, it's the same. Okay, so when you define a method inside the body of the of the of a class just remember not to put the function keyword you are using the the, the class declaration syntax this will automatically become a property of the class prototype and of course it will be accessible to every object created by that class so we are rebuilding, let's say, with classes and, and prototypes, what uh, is the normal way of, of thinking in Java. We define a method and every object will have the, that method. Uh, the class is no matter. The class prototypes are different from classes. Uh, prototypes are, are special objects that we may use to store properties inside. Prototypes are just objects. Classes are more like functions okay every function every class has its own private object which is called prototype where we can store some other attributes that will be uh, linked this object prototype will be linked to every object created by the function or created by the class okay so if we have the the, the notion of a function or a class which is an item that creates objects this is a, let's say, a sort of a factory of, for creating objects. But then we have this prototype object, which is an object. It's not a, a function, it's not some code. It's a store where we can have extra properties that are accessible to all the objects. Hmm? Uh, if I go back to this, uh, uh, you see that the function 
person here is different from the function uh, from the person prototype so we have a function and we have the prototype of that function uh, we can access the prototype the, fu the function with the function name dot prototype which is the same as the class name dot prototype and every object um, created uh, from that function or from that class uh, is automatically linked uh, to the prototype object you see it may be, it may seem strange that uh, the prototype object p is not linked to person to the function because i i don't want an object to share the same methods as the function object no i want the method to share some methods with the methods I personally want to add to that specific uh, creation of creator function. Hmm? Um, the prototype you are saying is like a context accessible to that type of object. Uh, yes, if you want to call it a, con it, it's just a normal object hmm? which is uh, connected to, the, to every function or to every f class that you are creating. Okay, is the storage common to all the instances of that function or of that class uh, when we are programming we don't need to remember all of the details okay these are just the inner mechanisms so we are defining the method at the class level and we expect every object to be able to call this method that's it internally we have the prototype and the these mechanisms that are working okay um, uh, just, just because sometimes in the code you would see something like function dot prototype equals something, and so mm, we may understand what is happening. Uh, like I said, this is syntactic sugar, so classes are using the, the class scope to put uh, elements inside the prototype. Uh, there are also special uh, methods that are that can be defined that are called get and set methods um, that can actually decide. Uh, what happens when you try to access a property so remember that in javascript uh, we don't have uh, accessor methods like in java in java we are used to have private properties and then for every private property a public get and a public set method okay here we don't have anything of that sort we have a property which is not private we cannot make a property private all, all properties are public so we are just reading and writing them no fuss but sometimes when we read a property, or we, especially when we write a property, we want to do some computation, we want to do something else. So there is a mechanism for redefining what happens when we read the property. So actually, if we are doing something like uh, uh, x equal plus dot a, like we said before, we are accessing property a. Uh, normally, we will access directly this property, but if we have a method called get a, then actually this uh, access operation will call this method and will execute this code. So the value that is returned may not be actually the, the, prop, the, the value of property A, but may contain some other computation. So we can redefine, it's the reverse. Okay. In Java, to access an object, you have to, you have to define a get function. Here, for reading a function and a, a property, we just uh, use the dot syntax, but sometimes we can redefine what happens transparently, invisibly, when you actually call this method, uh, um, read this property, or in the set uh, when you write this property. Uh, so let's not confuse them with the normal Java method for accessing method. These are useless in JavaScript. We don't need them. Uh, these uh, getters and setters are only if you want to redefine the default behavior of a get or a set uh, operation. You will never call these methods yourselves because they will be automatically called whenever you access a property with the normal dot syntax. Okay, so I, they're not used very much, uh, but I mentioned them just to avoid the confusion with the, with the Java setters and getters, which are the normal way of accessing elements here there are a special way for redefining uh, the way and also we have a static keyword that defines uh, uh, methods valid for the at the class level 
uh, but they cannot be actually they're useless uh, if I can, can use a word they are just uh, defined inside the class but they don't share nothing with that class so they cannot use any of the uh, properties uh, you see that for example this method re, uh, uses uh, that the comparison with the width property here but it needs to receive a copy of the object a and b so it cannot access properties of the object itself because it's defined outside the function hmm? it's like uh, an external function it's like an external method okay so there's no basically no difference between a static method and the function which is defined normally outside uh, the class itself maybe you want to keep it there but uh, it doesn't have any special access to the internal of the class itself it can be called you see it can be called without uh, instantiating object so it's just a method that you can a utility method that you can call it's similar to a to a java static method but since in java you cannot have uh, functions outside classes static is important because it's needed since in javascript you may have functions outside classes adding statics <laughs> doesn't give you much of advantage also because you don't have the, any visibility problems because all the variables are accessible but they included them so that uh, people coming from java would be more happy and finally we also have this extends keyword that is used to create uh, subclasses from existing classes and uh, the extends uh, uh, works uh, like uh, we first build uh, an object we call the constructor of the super class to set some properties and then call the constructor of the lower class to set other properties and uh, we do that explicitly with the uh, with super call and uh, and then we we are we will have objects that inherit or link to the prototype of all the classes so basically in this case we have a student s which is prototype linked to the prototype of student and this one is also prototype linked to the prototype of person so we have two steps and then of course of object so we are adding one way of having a longer prototype chain is that of creating an object from a class that inherits from another class and these prototypes are also are all linked together in a chain and they, it behaves uh, like uh, like we we expect basically so uh, object created by lower classes may have access to the properties of the upper classes okay the last topic uh, of course we don't have time to to dig into that uh, but i will leave it uh, for you to to browse through the to the slides uh, are just the syntax because we already use that uh, are just the syntax uh, for modules mm -hmm. uh, it's a, it's not a, a complex topic uh, we already noticed that for creating program over multiple files we need to have modules and import them and so on and we used uh, two different syntaxes for modules one is using the import keyword and the other was for the require function uh, why? Well, because in Node.js uh, they started defining a way for importing modules with the required functions much before there was a standard mechanism in JavaScript for handling modules. And when the standard, standard came with ex 6 it defined its own mechanism using export and import statements. Okay, and it was incompatible with what uh, was the habit in uh, in in, in Node.js. Uh, and so right now we have two kinds uh, of syntaxes for using modules. One is the standard ES6 uh, syntax, uh, and the other is so-called uh, the, the old uh, the old way, which is called the uh, common JS uh, uh, syntax. Okay. Um, and so in these slides, basically what you have is some information, basically practical information about how to write uh, an export statement. Uh, in an export statement work in the x6 and basically work in the browser and also in recent version of node.js but not all not all the dependencies are being updated to to handle import and export so in node.js right now we have a mixed environment in which some modules can be called with import and export and some model can only be called with require so usually node we still work with the old syntax in the browser we may use we must use export and import and so there are different ways of exporting 
a single value or a, a set of values uh, and they can be imported like uh, with the, we already are using uh, import uh, uh, one name from a module and the module here is the, is the name of the file uh, that contains with a with a search algorithm um, yeah we, we you can find some details about the syntax nothing is nothing difficult but different variation of the syntaxes that we already used uh, here you can find uh, basically the, the, the references for that for renaming and so on and um, from the browser modules should be loaded with the type equal to module we didn't use that up to now because it requires a server so we can import we will learn to import modules in the browser right now uh, react is doing that for us so we are not doing this explicitly we couldn't show you how to do that by hand because we didn't have a server yet so it doesn't work from files that is why uh, we had to you know, to delay the the presentation of modules until we have more more uh, more information because it, it couldn't be really used at the beginning hmm? And uh, we have also uh, two or three slides at the end uh, about common JS modules uh, uh, that uh, uh, tell you uh, basically about the function that object exports and the function require that are the alternative mechanisms for in uh, you require a module and you receive an object. That object has some properties that you can use internally. And how is this object created? But well, easily by adding properties, your own properties, to a predefined object which is called exports. So you call it just exports dot and you add the properties and everything you add to these exports predefined objects in Node.js uh, will automatically be available as a property of the, the object that is returned by the required method. So all concepts that we already used in an informal way and here you just find that some uh, say a better explanation about the syntax uh, if you have any any doubt about this any question about this uh, maybe we can solve them uh, uh, through the chat uh, because nothing uh, say really really complex to understand okay uh, i think that's all for today um, next week on the lab remember the lab will be all online and you will have to use the um, router for restructuring your um, uh, your application it will also be the last lab of the big lab number one so at the end of next week you have you will have to submit it for get your extra point at the exam and the next week we'll start uh, uh, discussing the server side of web applications uh, with uh, express uh, um, the web server and so that to be able to to you know to to link the client with the server and the big lab number two will work on the server side and joining the client and the server side at the end will be uh, so we are starting to see the the light at the end of the tunnel of this course okay so thanks for listening and uh, see you next week uh, for uh, to everybody thank you bye bye